Next, we have another son. I discovered this young lad maybe four or five years ago. Godfrey Daniels, he's the oldest one in the room. Another genius who reaches into time immemorial with the greatest dexterity. <sighs> Michael Rose. with no title. The tilted fan is quiet, where the clothes pile, heap like bales. Yes, the crooked fan, he sleeps. Today, I myself have slept long. At two, the ears now zing and chime. A plane buzzes, a bee's body bristle bristles. Buddha sits adrift eternally upon my desk, the clutter here clutters, but Buddha just sits there upon the desk. Visions and pictographs waft onto the earth, bathing in the slanted sun. The lake gleams, rustles, and dances like the windy leaves of a red maple tree. A matrix of symbols is falling here. The Buddha, he sits so still and wooden. The car zoom zooms. Does it really zaza zoom? Does the bee really buzz bristle? Does the movement really happen? Or is everything just still like the Buddha, the one who sits? The hair, like a universe, limbs pointed to the sky, hand cooing to the moon, this cool resting spoon. Is changing just another form of changelessness happening? Mm -hmm. For we see a drifting world sift and drift. Is that perhaps not like our believing a still carving of Buddha is anything more than just a still thing? Perhaps that stillness is far more still, far, far more still. Perhaps the stillness of this statue means to whisper to us. Neither movement nor Buddha nor I nor you ever was or ever has been. The tilted fan is quiet, where the clothes pile, heap like bales. Yes, the crooked fan, he sleeps. <laughs> and this poem repeats, repeats, repeats. <laughs> I, uh, that's fabulous. That's, uh, that's just, as beneficial as repetition is, that was unintentional. All right. <laughs> So he says, <laughs> the oracle himself. Oh, yes, 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 that's a nice one. Okay, um, this is a, it's a love poem for my wife. In the midst of the waters, I remember when the word was made, dripping from the light and catching upon the lips of God like a wine and running down the chin. In the beginning, her words were the lips, and her lips the words, and her chin the firmaments in the midst of the waters toiling. Then the daughter sang and broke from the chest in this a darkly mist, a mist that crackled like thunder and lightning and beamed blue and blush. I was a mountain awaiting the gospel of her neck, an angel sound with sonnets. She wanted the bones of my breath to give the body of her simpering light. I still remember your whispering eyes and the breath that begged a kiss. It took me years to give it, but your body beckoned and beckoned and stood poised with life. For you were in the light and with the light and you were the light. Your skin billowing like willow branches Coiling bark, calling savannas with the dews of night, twisting. One evening upon your porch. One evening upon your porch, you stood like raindrops in the moon. 
I drank from your thighs like a moor. I fantasized for this earth to climb your waist and to find the light inside. Now, in the moon of the early morn, I see your clouds drifting past in a mist not different from the roiling beginning, where your words laid baited and sailed like the song of a ribcage smiling. A singing river of words reminds me of your voice and settles in the shores and brushes of memory. It tills the memory and drinks from the soil for it pines in the daytime for the body of you. Mm. Okay. Um, okay. This poem is called Let Us Begin Here Like Children. Um, I'll let it speak for itself. No introduction. Let us begin here like children. Let us begin here like children, laughing, 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 scooping the sun into the palms of our hands, orange and pulpy like a pumpkin, sweet like a mango. Let us pull the world from our chest, skyscrapers loosed from the heart of being, raised from the flesh, farmed like holy pages from grasses and leaves. Let us find the palmyra stump, sleep in the scriptures of the Rita, till the tillless firth, comb the lapping sea, lavish and happy. All this doing is bringing naught but more doing forth. Writing, bringing, writing, thinking, bringing, thinking, dukkha, pain, bringing dukkha, more dukkha, more dukkha, more hate. Where is samadhi? Where the golden boy? Where the crying sun, the blinding heart, the thunderous laugh of Zeus? Where is Artemis? Where, where my dropping heart, raised and vanquished, lit, then relinquished? Here now, return your hands to the orange pulp the flying heart lifting, the world tall and quaint and fertile upon two shoulders, songs then leaping from the buildings and the bounding yellow cities. We are Atlas cackling, Poseidon smiling, Atlantis dreaming. Yes, scoop again now the orange world, the child we once were smiling, once light as the day, once soft as the garden's soil. Yes, scoop again now the orange world, wet and slipping, dripping and free. Yes, scoop again now a different world, one laughing and mountainous and free. Quickly, I tell you, we both, you and I, will sink like lures down and down into the ocean or the lake. Colder, colder it will get, thicker and thicker and sadder it will get. A light will appear like a little moon will turn on and then off, on and then off and be gone without a rhythm. This is the sea where desires steep. Hear the hemlock tea. Scoop now the pulpy sun, so orange and so sopping. Do not sob any longer. Do not lift a single finger. Do not pour a single thought. Let me fill you for one moment solely. See now the world we know. We, us both, it is suffering. All the world has been a suffering. Every moment colored slightly by a weight, a slump in the spine, a hollowness in the breathing. We have lost the pulpy orange sun, the child who cared not the bright eyes lifting all the world dark. I tell you, honorable one, venerable Buddha who is wanting too much, you, holy one, who is awaiting their joy. I quote, when one is, two is. From the arising of one comes the arising of two. When one is not, two is not. From the non-arising of one comes the non-arising of two. End quote. For long we have sat and worshipped by a palmyra tree, and we have seen only that. For from one arises its consequence, 
At long last, the color of the world must be moved. The painter made wise, the gazer made to gaze upon another and be within in another. I tell you, from elsewhere arises elsewhere. Oh. Oh, but elsewhere is but a desert. Pray that I may stay near the tree. I reply, yes, yes, there is a desert beyond. And yes, yes, we may stay near the tree. But know, my friend, that your eye, it never was, and your tree never was, and that desert never was. Parigraha. You cling to that which is not. And so merely you cling. Solely in a verb you are. There is no tree, there is no desert, there is no you. There is naught else but an action, an arising of one and a non-arising of another. You are the wind, dear friend, lifting and falling near some cliffs far away, wondrously lifting and falling. But you suffer, for once you saw a fly and lifted him first higher, then lower. By the sun gleaming like rain, you saw a bird. But the bird stayed away. You wondered, might I not too lift the bird the way I lifted the fly? Now you have decided. I need not see, I need not know the bird. But you are stale like still water. You need close your eyes and feel your windy body disappear, your windy eyes gone, your windy mind lost. Then you may unhinge your identity and be the wind below the squawking bird and be the arising of another beautiful one. Yes, scoop the orange pulp and cry. The orange world awaits us, for we are not and never have been. There the bird awaits us near the cliffs, not cliffs, and the birds, not birds, and the pulp, not pulp, and the joy, not joy, and the there, the there, not there. Let us begin here like children, then, laughing, 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 scooping the sun into the palms of our hands, orange and pulpy like a pumpkin, sweet like a mango, so, so sweet, and dripping like a mango. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, I think that's a fine spot to stop. I don't need to read anything. Else. How do you follow that? <laughs> that was magnificent. Um, Michael Rose, the oldest soul in the room.